morning, everyone, and welcome to Freedom School 4.0 School Days. We would like to thank Georgia State University and the Department of Africana Studies for this opportunity to share with you. Today is February 23rd, 2022, and the title of our webinar this evening is 40 Years and Counting, the Impact of the Dogwood City Chapter of the Lynx Incorporated on the Atlanta Community. We are delighted to bring greetings to you this evening from the Dogwood City Chapter of the Lynx Incorporated. I am Dr. Laura Sam Sames, and I will serve as your host this evening. I have been a proud member of the Dogwood City Chapter of the Lynx Incorporated since 2013, and I'm currently serving as the Archives and History Committee chair, Chairperson as we celebrate our 40th anniversary this year. This evening, you will hear from three of our chapter members, Link Pat Russell McLeod, Link Anita Watley, and Link Sandy Peterson Cooper. As we segue between our guest panelists, I will introduce each one respectively. But before we hear from our dynam dynamic panelists this evening, I'd like to offer a little background on the Lynx Incorporated as well as the Dogwood City Chapter. The Lynx Incorporated is an international nonprofit corporation established in 1946. Its membership consists of more than 16,000 professional women of African descent in 292 chapters located in 41 states, the District of Columbia, the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, and the United Kingdom. It's one of the nation's oldest and largest volunteer service organizations, consisting of extraordinary women who are committed to enriching, sustaining, and ensuring the culture and economic survival of African Americans and other persons of African ancestry. The Dogwood City Chapter of the Lynx Incorporated was founded on June 5th, 1982, and began its philanthropic and volunteer service tw with 24 charter members. Dedicated to the purpose of promoting and engaging in educational, civic, and intercultural activities, the Dogwood City Chapter became the second chapter in the metropolitan Atlanta area. Today, the Dogwood City Chapter has 92 members. Members are especially proud of their involvement in the activities that benefit primarily the city of Atlanta, but also reach beyond it, the continental US. Together through private, public and nonprofit partnerships, the members have raised and donated over $1.5 million to the Atlanta community and, over, and have over 80,000 documented hours of community service. The Dogwood City chapter members are linked in a chain of friendship and are committed to improving the quality of life for others, particularly those of African descent. And now everyone, I have the distinct honor of introducing our first guest panelist this evening, the absolutely phenomenal Link Pat Russell McLeod. Link Pat was originally inducted into the Arlington, Virginia chapter of the Lynx Incorporated and transferred twice, first to San Antonio, Texas chapter, and then a second time to our beloved Dogwood City chapter here in Atlanta, Georgia. It is also important to note that Link Pat served as the 11th National President of the Links Incorporated from 1994 to 1998. Link Pat, thank you for joining us as a guest panelist this evening. Please offer us a little more of your bio and perspective of the Links Incorporated through a national and international lens. Thank you so much. When we focus upon this gathering of links, we have leadership at different levels. And we are very pleased to be all a part of the chapter we honor tonight, Dogwood City Chapter, based in Atlanta, Georgia. My national lens gives us pause because in 1946, a very good year, <laughs> Margaret Roselle Hawkins and Sarah Strickland Scott thought they could do more and reach further than they did by just doing neighborhood projects. And they asked their friends, seven of them, to come and ideate, give thought leadership to how could we meet monthly, perhaps, have dinner meetings, invite our husbands, have our children over, and still make a greater difference in the neighborhood. Imagine that that was their reason for gathering. They did not even imagine, perhaps, that out of that 
thought leadership, they would become one of the oldest and largest volunteer organizations in the fabric of African-American women in volunteerism based upon the underpinnings of friendship and service. Imagine that seven friends morphed into over 16,000 members, 292 chapters. And it's worth repeating, 41 states, District of Columbia, Commonwealth of Bahamas and the United Kingdom. We target African-Americans and those of African ancestry to empower, improve, to educate, to activate, to involve, to engage, to encourage their best in class citizenry. So who do the links represent? Our heterogeneity is very vast for we are decision makers and problem solvers and household engineers. We are women who invite women who would not necessarily ever be in the construct of a local chapter. So they're elevated in status to honorary member. Those women would include Marian Anderson and Leontine Price and the Honorable Patricia Roberts Harris. Those women include Condoleezza Rice and the Honorable Kamala Harris. I think we all know her, our national vice president of the United <laughs> States of America. We demonstrate engagement. We walk our talk as links. For we have a million documented hours. Notice the word documented hours. It's not rhetoric, it's proven, it's proven, it's codified by chapter, by chapter, individual by individual, a million documented hours in community service annually. And every four years, we empower to improve an organization that has as its purpose, empowerment and betterment for community stakeholders across the fabric of our citizenry. So we've given a million dollars among other organizations to the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, the Obama Foundation and the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. So I want to close this National Lens segment by really as a lawyer who gives history uh, a priority because it was my major. I'm a lawyer, a telecommunications lawyer from Indianapolis. That would be the central area of the links. We have four. So I moved as a person after college who worked in DC. That's the Eastern area of links where we were founded. And I went into the Alexandria, Virginia chapter. Remember, that's where links were founded in the East. Married in 83 and moved to San Antonio, Texas. That's the Western area of links. And wouldn't you know, moved to Atlanta, Georgia some 35 years ago. That's the Southern area of links. So I'm that diverse link who's lived all over LinkedIn and in our organization, our spouses and partners are connecting links. Our children are aero links, H-E-I-R. They have legacy, aero links. And in that construct, I want you to be reminded as we go forward over this next few moments, Focus upon how history repeats itself. Because in 1994 through 96, I was a president on the eve of the 50th national anniversary of the links. And what was the pulse of the country? Affirmative action, 
was in intensive care. Susan Taylor, whom you know from Essence and the Honorable Mark Moriel, he was the mayor of New Orleans where we were holding our meeting. And we met and conversed and tried to decide what should we do? Should we bring in the national meetings to New Orleans because they were insisting that no longer could there be affirmative actions to empower to the what? alleged disadvantage of majority, those who were of color and not of the majority kind. History repeats itself, it's 2022. The parlance or the nomenclature has changed. We talk a lot about diversity, equity and inclusion, but may I suggest to you, living while black is still the cathartic release daily of unconscious bias, conscious bias, marginalization, disparity, implicit bi bias, macroaggressions and microaggressions. So the more things change, the more things remain the same. So our purpose, our mandate, our mission, keeps us like-minded. We are those who are 16 plus thousand strong, linked, latched, locked in friendship and service. Simply amazing. Thank you so much, Link Pat, for sharing your view of our organization through your lens as our 11th past national president. And next, everyone, I have the privilege of introducing our second guest panelist this evening, Link Anita Watley, who is a chapter is a charter member of the Dogwood City Chapter of the Links Incorporated and our sixth chapter president serving from 1991 through 1993. Link Anita, we are looking forward to you sharing with us this evening reflections on the 1982 inception of the Dogwood City Chapter and the early beginnings of our chapter. Thank you. Thank you so much, Laura. It only gives me pleasure to be a part of this chapter, Dogwood City Chapter, and the Lynx Incorporated. We started when two friends came together. That's what I like to hear. They came together and decided that we would get a second Atlanta Link chapter. And that would be Jane Smith, and Pamela Hoffman, and may I say to the late Dr. Jane Smith and Pamela Hoffman. They came and they invited at the time 28 women. And uh, I was their friend because I introduced them in Cambridge, Mass when we were all in school there. And I said, you have to meet Jane, Pam, you have to meet Jane and Jane, you have to meet Pam, she's moving to Atlanta. So we got there and they called us together and I said, why are we coming together? What are we doing? And she said, well, we're going to try to form a prospectus, a group to come together, committed to volunteerism and able to lead as well as follow with people. So we came together and I said, oh, okay. I was new to town, I had just come back home from New York and I did not know most of the women, but a lot of them I did. And I said, this is interesting. And then they said it was going to be the Lynx Incorporated. I, oh, I said, we're not making up a new chapter. And they said, no, we're making to be, we're asking to be a chapter in the Lynx Incorporated. So for those times and that year and a half, we worked so hard doing different tasks, uh, doing programs in schools, programs in recreation centers, doing and working together until we were chartered in June 5th as the Dogwood Sick city chapter of the Lynx Incorporated 1982. Now that's remarkable that we're talking about it now, 40 years later. We were so proud to be the second Atlanta chapter and we got to work. Everybody had to work. That was what it was all about. It was only, by the time we tried, it was only 24 ladies. Something in life happens that people couldn't go through with the follow through. And so we ended up getting together. Our priority was working. We started with our different programs and doing, we always met in the place where we were working. We would meet in Southwest Hospital. We would meet in Southside. 
We would meet at the Phyllis Wheatley Y. We would meet in all of these places where we were doing work. And it made a difference because you were familiar with your surroundings and you looked around and saw things that you needed. And it was an interesting, interesting group. We learned how to cut meetings down to under two hours. We knew we were interesting then because we could go on and on and everybody had a wonderful idea. But the thing about it and being a link is learning to work as a team. We must learn to work together in order to make something good for the community. And that was a good teaching lesson for us those first 10 years. We had to learn to work together. I always say this, and you always laugh at me when I say that links, what does it mean to me? I said links means that we're living and we're loving and we interpersonally network kindness through service. Friendship and service was very important. And, you know, as things go, things change. Oh, we built our first habitat uh, but with a group of women in 1991. We came together and we were all working together, learning to work together to do things. The homelessness and homeless issue was very important to us. A lot of people don't remember the Phyllis Wheatley Y and it was on Tatnall Street across from Mars Brown College. And we would go to the Y, to the gym, to deal with homelessness every single you know, week. We were there. And then when the, home, the shelter moved to transition in a fire station, we went to the fire station and we would cook. And we would do all those things to help people with work skills, resume writing, people finding jobs for them. It was, it was phenomenal. Working together, we could do these things because we had such accomplished members, believe me. Everybody did a little bit of everything. So it was wonderful. And then working with young people, it was a great project that started out of National. Gladys Gary Vaughn, I think, started Project LEAD. And Project LEAD implemented and maintained in middle school. We went to the Martin Luther King Junior Middle School and taught self-esteem. We taught about everything that was happening in the community then so that the students would be very aware. And we went twice a week and we did it for years, for years. Uh, now, mainly I figured my friends took me because my background is in the arts and uh, they needed me to do some things. I'm in uh, theater and I would put things together and go from there. But it was, it was interesting. We assisted the Atlanta Ballet. Whenever they wanted something done, they would call on the Dogwood City chapter to do it. We assisted the Atlanta Ballet in getting children to see Arthur Mitchell's uh, Dance Theater of Harlem at the Fox Theater. Uh, we gave money to students who needed money and financially were not able to, to help it themselves. I was fortunate at the, this time, in the beginning, I was teaching at Mars Brown College and Sarah Scott's grandson, our founder's grandson was going to school there. And I just had to be able to do something for him as being our founder's grandson. And I asked him, I said, Scott, what is it that you might need? And he was talking about getting books. I said, oh, that's no problem, we have that, let's move on. But it was just to bring that back to the chapter to work with things. But I think of some of our most interesting projects during this time. Um, we built our own Habitat House after collaborating with a group of women in building the house over on Crew Street in uh, Reynolds Town. And um, that was incredible. I think the other day, uh, Link Pat had mentioned how cold it was and we were hammering away. We were gonna get this house up and get it done because it was gonna be the Dogwood City chapter. It habitat for me, Humanity House. When we finished the house, we were ready to decorate from head to toe and uh, the Habitat had to tell us, slow up, this is the owner's house. And so we just begged, could we please buy blinds? And we did that and the house still stands and the owner and we're very proud of all those things. We've done so much and so many different places in this city. Um, I think Link, Link um, Lisa asked a question the other night, but our health and wellness, we worked under an umbrella. The arts, the arts services to youth, national and international trends, health and wellness came along later. And we were always, always willing to put something under each category. And we had enough people who wanted to do those particular things. We would get books and send books to Africa. 
We had a member who was a part of international and was international and lived there. We would get books and send things to Africa. Um, it just, I start thinking about my, my links chapter and what made us special. We had to have money to do some of these things. So we created a fundraiser, which was known as a Harlem Renaissance affair. And we did our first fundraiser in 1984 at the State Garden Room. And it was, we came to that decision, which was the best decision in the world because I love the Harlem Renaissance, but I was co-chair along with Beverly Branton and I couldn't tell you what the title was gonna be. I needed someone from the audience to give us the title. And that was Billy Aaron. And I was very thankful. She said, we're doing the twenties. We should do the Harlem Renaissance. I was in heaven. We went about it in so many different ways and loved it each year. Um, we did it from 84 and you all are still doing it now, Sandy, but we did it where we went physically places and building sets and doing all those things. I look back and I can't believe I, I was in an organization that's almost 40 years old. Um, when you can hit alumni status, alumna status, when you turn 30, have to work 30 years or turn 70. And I think we were so tired at the time when we, in 2012, when we were 30, had been in there 30 years, that a majority of us took alumna status. But the only thing about that that people have to understand is that we had worked every single day and it was time to let 12 new people come in and begin to go forward. Um, and we had keep it moving, fitness. M. Agnes Jones School, where we did an art contest every year for the past, what, 30 years almost? And we would work with the students and the art teacher and we'd take the art and we'd walk and we'd be a part of the national arts, the national arts contest and our students naturally used to win. And so, <laughs> so and we were so excited about that and taking that to national and receiving that monies and a reward to go to the student and also something to the school. We also had, um, oh gosh, Kaiser Permanente, Comcast. We built a, um, a walking trail at, in Agnes Jones. We were in Agnes Jones, the Reading Rams came along. We worked with the students and everything. We got to M. Agnes Jones because of one of our members. And that would be Gwen Austin, who was a teacher there. And she said, well, we need to, I'd like to do something with my school. And we were so happy, we could not, believe it, but they're still working in Emma Agnes Jones when you can get in the school, you know. But we, we're we special, we're special. We learn to work together. <laughs> when I was president, I became the, they used to call me the printing president because I wanted to print and save everything. I wanted all of our information put together and left for somebody to look at it. Everybody started doing around the country what we were doing in Atlanta. And it was interesting. And um, because we came in and a lot of other people our age came in and had chapters and we said, okay, we're gonna fundraise and this, that, and the other thing. And we were so fortunate as a chapter. We had a national president come from our chapter. And that was one of the most exciting things you could do. Going to different areas, meeting people from other places, going to national conventions. And we were still doing this while all raising children, you know, going, going to games, going as taking care of the elderly, et cetera. But it was such a thing that you had to commit to. You had to commit to friendship and service. If you committed to it, then you could do it. And I'm not gonna talk anymore because I know I could go on and on forever about Dogwood City Chapter of the Lynx, but I am so thankful that my friends forced me to come to a meeting because usually I have to have details before I go. And it worked well because we are still continuing and I am appreciative of that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Link Anita, for sharing your wonderful insight with us this evening on the inception of Dogwood City Chapter as a chartering member of our beloved organization. And last but not least, everyone, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing Link Sandy Peterson Cooper, who was inducted into the Dogwood City Chapter of the Lynx Incorporated in 2014. Sandy has served the chapter in many leadership roles and is currently our 19th chapter president, serving her first presidential term, 
from 2019 to 2021, and her second and current presidential term from 2021 through 2023. Link Sandy, can you please share with us a little about current chapter programming and the Dogwood City chapter and what the Dogwood City chapter is currently engaged in? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good, good evening, everyone. First, let me say uh, thank you for having us here with you today. Um, every time I hear um, our uh, past national president, Pat Russell McLeod, and our charter member, um, Anita Watley, talk about our history as a chapter, it just, it just blows me away. And, you know, you hear, you, you get a little bit more each time uh, they reflect on that. And so that's, you know, very, very, very important. And, you know, it's, it's amazing that um, many of the programs, the ideas that they had, the culture that they established still exist in our chapter today. Um, they gave us a good foundation and we feel like it is incumbent upon us to continue that very foundation and move, moving forward. So um, as you know, um, many of the programs um, were mentioned earlier by uh, Anita. Um, so uh, we're currently still doing a, a great deal of them. Um, we do our programming through um, our facets, our five facets, which are services to youth, national trends and services, international trends and services, and health and human services and the arts. And so we design our programming, we break up in, in our various um, facets and design programs for um, designated audiences who we have deemed may need our help or support in that particular area. So some of our award-winning programs, um, award-winning meaning from our Southern Area Conference and even from the national um, organization, um, our, um, on, uh, one is our Saturday Academy, which is under the Services to Youth facet. And in 2003, um, as Anita mentioned, we partnered with M. Agnes Jones. And M. Agnes Jones is located in the um, Booker T. Washington cluster of the Atlanta public school system. So in 2013, we started uh, Saturday Academy, and we invited students from the entire cluster to attend. We provide in Saturday Academy a multifaceted support to students' efforts in reading, STEM, and African American his and her story. Um, it is a, a comprehensive approach that addresses the needs of the whole child. And we have helped to close achievement gaps, empower the students with educational and career options, expose them to healthy lifestyle choices, and instill a sense of dignity and self-worth to each child. In 2021, we um, did, of course, we're virtual. Our vir all of our programming, for the most part, is virtual. We led a virtual um, series of workshops with the theme of color, community, and coronavirus, a historical review of the strength and resilience of communities of color during healthcare crisis in America. So this year we have um, continued that conversation and we are attracting all ages. Um, initially, the program was designed for fifth through eighth graders, but we have, um, we have graduate and undergraduate students who are participating with us. And it's a very inter, uh, interesting interaction between the very um, student population. So we are very proud of that. We also have Reading Rams, which is our partnership again with M. Agnes Jones, and that is to help build strong literacy skills. Um, that was a big focus of our chapter for many, many, many years, and we had, we continue to focus in that area. So we want to make sure that we continue to foster a love of reading by our students. Next, under our, un, under our National Trends and Services facet, our activities include voter registration and education. Um, we have partnered with a nonprofit uh, by the name of Forever Family. And that partnership includes in-kind and monetary support for the families and caregivers of incarcerated women. Additionally, uh, with Forever Family, we partner with the Metro Transitional Center and provide um, resume writing skills, interview 
interviewing skills, um, emotional, um, mental health support for those women who are about to transition and re-enter the workforce. It's been a very successful program. Under our arts facet, we have taken children um, routinely to the Museum of Design Atlanta um, on site field trips and we have become creative in offering the virtual um, field trips. So that's just a sampling, a very, very, very small sampling of, uh, of our program that we um, initiate during our program calendar year. Just a very, very small snapshot. <laughs> so. Indeed, excellent, President Sandy. Secondly, can you please share with us the chapter's exciting plans to celebrate its 40th anniversary this year? Well, we have many, many, many things on, on board here. It's our Ruby anniversary, and we want to make sure that um, we record our history uh, so that the next 40 years, um, I may be around, maybe in a walker, but <laughs> I hope to be around, <laughs> but that we um, understand, we continue to understand the legacy of Dogwood City. So we will have a 40th presidential time capsule project that's led by our um, past president and charter member, Anita Wadley. And so the thought is, is that we're going to um, put some notes, what have you in the uh, time capsule. Is that right, Anita? We're gonna put some notes in the, in the uh, time capsule. And uh, June 5th, what's 40 years from now? Um, whatever that number is, they will open it. 2062. 2062. Okay, 2062. They will open it and, and read it. So that should be very, very interesting. Uh, as well, we are going to have our um, Dogwood City exhibit unveiled on our charter date of June 5th at the Auburn Avenue Research Library. We've got some other plans in place that may include um, reestablishing our relationship with Habitat for Humanity um, in a different way. Um, and we have a couple of other things planned for in the fall. So we look forward to that and hope to have the community join us. Very good, very good. At this time, Dr. Lisa Shannon from Georgia State University and the Dogwood City Chapter of the Lynx, do we have any questions in the chat for our guest panelists this evening? Um, yes, Dr. Laura, we actually do. One of them, and any of the panelists is welcome to answer. One of them, Ann Ellison wants to know, over the past 40 years, what is, what in your opinion, what is the best service project our chapter has done for the city of Atlanta or even nationally? Mm. Oh. Dr. Dr. Pat, you're on mute. Thank you. From a national lens, I'd like to, of course, focus upon some of our national efforts. And one was during my administration when it could be your daughter, your niece, your grandchild, your neighbor. Her name was Kimba. And she was a student at Hampton University and she was accused and convicted of being a drug mule. She was a first year student, naive, gorgeous, and mm -hmm. scholastically empowered. And wrong crowd got her where she was. Uh, unbeknownst to her, she did not even know what she was doing, um, mm -hmm. but she was convicted more years than she was old to serve 26 years in federal prison. We as women across organizations civically with links at the mainline starting gate with other like-minded organizations lobbied, petitioned, begged, pleaded, wrote legislation, had capital days, days at the Capitol as Kimba 
Smith as a priority. Long story short, on Christmas Eve, President Clinton, after six years of having been in federal prison, Kimba was released. Mm -hmm. Kimba is now all that we are, educated, completion, and she's a global orator, and yeah. she will tell you and the world, if it doesn't look right, it probably isn't. And everything that glitters really is not gold. That was a stellar program because we saw ourselves in Kimba. It can happen to anybody. So stay woke. Wow, thank you, Dr. Pat, for that. Um, Link Anita, can you think of anything over the past 40 years? I was just thinking, Lisa, that we have done so much and for so many people, and we always included the community. Um, we're talking about homelessness, transitions, voter registration. We were in the community, and we would take our arrow links with us to be a part, if we could, of some of the things that we were doing. Um, I always loved working with the children and doing things for the children at the schools. Even I call the college students children because I worked there so long. So it's just still doing things for the children and participating and helping them to see where they could be and what they could do. We're a group, we're a group that hands on. We always put hands on and work with things. And Pat, I remember that Kimba story so well and how it touched our hearts when we were talking about it in Boston at the uh, National Assembly. That was anybody's daughter, anywhere, anybody. And nowadays because of the climate and what's going on with our young black males, we cannot leave them out as long as we are going on with our young black females. We participated in the Coretta Scott King combination with all Lynx chapters of doing for the students at Coretta Scott King Middle School. Um, you know, we were always in someone's school somewhere doing things to make things better. We're so fortunate in our membership to have pediatricians, to have dentists, to have lawyers, we have teachers, we have psychologists, we have all those things in there. And we were talking about reading, Sandy, uh, you were talking about, we also did literacy action for years of going down and working with people in literacy action and then having a formal graduation at a facility for everyone who had passed the course and donating to the organization. That was an incredible experience. But there was, as I said, there's so many and something will hit me later, but individuals used to take things on themselves to do without sometimes telling the chapter. They would adopt a family or adopt a child. Now you always gave to the Carrie Steele Pitts home and, and, and Exodus and those places that were dealing with city without schools, without walls. We were there making those things work. Yes, okay. I remember our parties, <laughs> the Harlem Renaissance of raising money. I always remember those, how people would get excited and dressed in the garb of the era and come in. But we knew that that money, and we were seriously about raising funds, were for our programs. They were for our programs so that we could do more and more and more. And as the, the chapter increased in membership, it was really interesting how you could back off and do something that you just loved yourself and not have to do everything because it was so small before. But now when I look at the size of the chapter, I am amazed. I am amazed how they function during the pandemic. I am amazed at the abilities of all the young women and what they're able to do. That's it. Thank you, Dr. Nita. Um, Dr. Lord, do we have time for about, I have about four more questions in the chat. We, we do, we, okay. we do have some more time. Thank you. Well, President Sandy, I'm gonna give this question to you. Aubrey Till would like to know, what can community activists do now to help support Dogwood City? 
Well, I think that we once we come together with our agenda, you know, we need we always need community support. And so to join in along with us uh, or let us know, um, be our ears. What is it? The phrase be our ears to the ground to let us know the important issues of today to make sure that we are um, cutting edge um, so that then we can provide the adequate support or be out, help be out front, help us be a leader in that regard. Let us lead, let us learn from you as well. I think um, would really help, help us help, help um, them help us because we have great resources. And if we know um, the various priorities, you know, and what's what really needs to be focused on when we can best use our our resources most efficiently, I think. Wow. Great answer. And Clark Davis, this is for any of the panelists. Clark Davis, she asked, what challenges or resistance have the links faced as black women with such power and organization by the power structure in accomplishing the goals of the group? And how have we been able to preserve for 40 years? Great question, Clark Davis. We've had to curate our membership. We've had to be certain that we held true to the allegiance and pledge we took to be sisters and to follow the mantra that working together works, that we're better together. And that celebration, that sistership, that, that alignment with being just like a four leaf clover, it's hard to find, but you're lucky to have if you have a sister, sister. And those sisters move with numbers too big to ignore their competencies, their intentionality, and their authenticity. So outside in was not our enemy. Outside in gave us pause because we coalesced and became glue-like in our internal selves because we were locked together, mission-minded for community betterment. Phenomenal. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Pat. So inspirational. Um, um, panelists, Mason Oruru and also Aubrey Till would like to know, what has been the contribution of males, of our male partners in for our organization? And anyone is well, welcome to answer that. Now, I'm not gonna let my link sisters sit here and we're gonna start with the connecting links. Absolutely. Right. Themselves are there for us. And remember, connecting links are our spouses, our partners. So now I'm going to turn it back over to my sister links so they can talk about all the, the, the nephews and the, the husbands and the boyfriends that help us help others. Well, Pat, you did say it, our connecting links. We would use their connections and anything that connected us to help the Dogwood City chapter. My husband knew one thing, that he did have to attend our events. And it was to support our chapter. And we would have the same group of people supporting our chapter. And I would ask, um, having been the, what was he, over the Carrie Steel Pits for a long time and the attorney, for the organization, he would ask and say, um, this is what we would need if you all could assist us. We would gladly assist you in what we can do for your organization. And that brought on the other board members to do things and work for us. And we all know they help us. We, if we needed ads, if we needed somebody to buy the table, if we needed somebody's resources as whatever their job was, could you help us do this? And they didn't hesitate to work with us did not hesitate. I can say it no better uh, than what um, 
um, past national president, uh, I think Pat had to say and what um, Anita just said. I totally agree. And, and, and this is Dr. Shannon. So I, I would like to say from a child whose father was and is a connecting link, seeing my father support my mom, who's also of course in the links, um, go with her throughout the world, undergirding her when she's needing financial funds to assist with building those homes throughout the world. Dr. Pat was one of the national presidents who spearheaded building over 60 homes in Africa. So I, I had the privilege to see my father undergird my mom. Um, someone put in a chat asking about mental health. Well, my dad often was my mom's mental health. Um, my, my brothers, my uncles, the men are there. It is so imperative for um, you know, us to never discount the connecting links, the sons, the husbands, who helped to um, undergird Dr. Dr. Cooper, President Sandy's husband, oh my God, what he does for Dogwood City and Lynx Nationals with his, he's a phenomenal cardiologist. He hosts webinars for us, telling us how to keep our heart on track. Um, that's not even talking about the countless financial funds that, you know, just the men uh, that partners of this organizations give. So I'm glad that y'all asked this question. Um, Stephen Bailey, no men cannot join the Links Incorporated, but they are definitely connecting links and they have other organizations that they serve in and we try to help with. So that was a great question. Um, there's one other question. The, the poor Fleming just asked. She wants to know, are there volunteer opportunities that the links offer to college students? Um, or do we have members um, or, or how else can um, college students volunteer to assist the links? And this is President Sandy, you're welcome, or anyone. Well, I was going to throw that question to you, uh, Lisa, <laughs> being that you well, are vice president of programming. <laughs> well, 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 my students at Georgia State, some of them are on now. Y'all know how we help, you know, whether it was um, helping to prepare for tailgate. We have students who are mentors with yeah. Forever Family. President Sandy mentioned that earlier, one of our partner organizations here. Our students, I will be trying to hopefully get a student this week to help us with some internal stuff that's happening right now with our chapter. Our students come and they help us in the streets of Atlanta. You know, y'all know y'all get extra credit from Dr. Shannon, plus their intern opportunities. Dogwood City actually, through our Southern area, just implemented this year an actual fellow. A, a scholarship fellow for college students, primarily at HBCUs. And these students, of course, they come and, and they're servant leaders. So they'll participate, they'll learn how to be leaders in the community while they're helping to serve. And they also get scholarship money. So one of the things that the Lynx does, including our chapter, we give quite a bit of money to students for scholarships. Other students have helped. Um, Dr. Laura has a phenomenal daughter who's ran webinars, our Saturday Academies. She and her, um, she and her younger brother ran webinars for us. So there are a plethora of ways that college students can assist, young people can assist, and also just get on and learn just by attending some of our webinars. So, you know, always reaching out, contacting us through the website, contacting me if you're in my class or anyone. If you see a dynamic lady in the community, a professional, a physician, um, some kind of woman doing something and you know that her heart is of service, she is probably a link. And, you know, sometimes just asking, you know, I've heard this, this group, this phenomenal group of 16,000 women um, who are links, you know, just ask them and then just say, how may I help? So that was a great question too. I'm glad to hear that. Um, do any of my other sisters have any other comments on how um, college students can help? If not, I have one more question. That's a great answer. And I know that I have personally enjoyed having 
uh, your students participate with us. And uh, as I mentioned, when I was speaking about our programming earlier, um, the, the conversation that took place last year when we, for Saturday Academy, when we had our you know, COVID workshops, if you will, I think that all, all age groups learn from each other. And then I think you know, for the younger children that were there to be on a, um, um, a, a, a workshop, be in a workshop um, with college age students, or even I think we had some high school age students. I think you know, it was probably really cool for them and probably gave us credibility in their eyes that you know, they, we did have some you know, uh, younger, younger um, uh, people that they could really look up to. So I think they probably, you know, really helped them resonate with us and, and, and um, the subject matter was, was very important to them as well. And I have one more question. Um, um, someone had mentioned earlier about the mental health. So President Sandy, can you expand about what, what the chapter actually does to make sure sisters like me keep our mental health intact? Uh, well, I think internally we we are sisters and we are there for each other. Um, and so, you know, always checking on each other, calling, texting, uh, maybe dropping a note in the mail, um, making sure that we focus on what's important and reminding each other that, you know, our, our mental health must be intact and to take care of each other, uh, take care of yourself and, and your family. So, you know, we try to exercise um, true sisterhood that, um, you know, everyone's not always, it's not, it's beyond just being a blood sister, right? It's, it's, it's about being, uh, being attached to each other. Um, and, and knowing that at the end of the day, I got your back, you got my back. And, you know, we're, we're, we need to, we are going to check in on each other and we're going to fight this thing through, you know, together, this thing called life together. And also the, the mental health seminars. I think we have one this, this Sunday that's coming up. Yes, 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 yes. We're doing a seminar. This will be the second series, second workshop on love yourself. Um, just, you know, you hear, you hear fancy names, you know, what it, so I said, well, maybe people don't even know what self-love is. Let's break that down and let's break that down and really have a conversation about that. So it's been an interesting session. And for some of y'all who also asked about what college students can do, um, there is a link on um, Mashika Reynolds. She said college age Aerolinks assist with tutoring. Our Aerolinks are actually our heirs, our students, our, our biological children who are coming up. They assist with tutoring, but you can still assist with tutoring. And also we have food drives and snacks giveaways. We have clothing drives. So there are many ways that you can assist. Um, Dr. Laura, I think I've covered all the questions in the chat. Kamari Mason had her or his hand raised, but I asked him to put that question in the chat. I'm not, I don't think that others can actually speak. Um, so if that question comes up within the next couple of minutes, Dr. Laura, I'll get back. But other than that, I think our questions have been answered successfully. Thank you, Dr. Laura. Thank you, thank you so much, Link Lisa. And thank you everyone for joining us this evening. Thank you to our guest panelists for this dynamic discussion. We would again like to thank the Auburn Avenue Research Library, the Georgia State Department, Georgia State University Department of Africana Studies, and the Freedom School for this opportunity this evening. Finally, our past national president, Link Pat Russell McLeod, will offer us a few brief closing remarks. Thank you, Dr. Laura, and thank you, panelists, my link sisters who have been impactive as we've given the really chronology of our 40 years. We are those women in Dogwood City chapter that have kept Georgia on our minds. We are those women who have sought to example that level of excellence 
that would be worthy of emulation. I'm excited about the students that have joined us as well as my link sisters across the fabric of our global membership because our interest is not the title, but the task. It has been our thought leadership. We have the character to care, the decency to share the concern to be compassionate and the knowledge, skill, expertise, and mother wit to frame our destiny. Georgia is on our mind because the communities that we seek to serve are being faced with voter oppression. Voter fraud is not the issue. It is those who don't support a political party. The right to vote is being threatened. So no souls to the polls and decreased hours for voting, limits on early voting. So we as a chapter are seeking to dare to avoid the model of silence because silence speaks louder than words. We're actively engaged asking ourselves, how many people did you help, not hinder? Encourage, not oppose. Walk toward rather than walk away from. Lift, not limit. Because everybody, and that's everybody, everybody, has the same 24 hours every day. Everybody has the same 1,440 minutes every day to solve it, to fix it, to resolve it, whatever the it is. So thank you, community. Thank you for joining Dogwood City for 40 years of daring to make a difference. Daring to be alert and brainy and compassionate and caring, determined and empathetic and friendly and fearless and fair. Daring to be those who recognize that giving is its own reward. We're trying to be honest women and inspirational women, just women. Women who are knowledgeable leaders, magnificent and necessary women, optimistic and prepared. We're often quiet enough to be still, to assess our bounce back, our resilience, smart and savvy, team-centric, undeterred visionaries, wise with discernment. And yes, we're that X factor for Georgia on our mind. And it's you that we think, because without you, we would just be a club. But we're a movement of difference makers, community, because of you. And we are Z's for the zest and the compilation of that zodiac that makes us positioned and placed as we keep Georgia on our minds. So we appreciate you. That's what we say in Georgia, you know that. We appreciate you for helping us be who and how we are. So when they ask you, who are the links? Who are the members of Dogwood City chapter? We are those who are dedicated and determined, dependable and dogged. The gospel writer perhaps says it best. As for us, we don't feel no ways tired. We've come too far from where we started from. Nobody told us that the road would be easy but we just don't believe. We just don't believe. We just don't believe he brought us this far. 
to leave us. Dogwood City Chapter, Georgia of the Lynx Incorporated, we thank you for giving us 40 years and we hope for 40 more to keep Georgia on our mind. Thank you for joining us this evening. Amen, Lynn Pat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.